everyone. This is Jesse Langhoff with Kiva. We are a consulting company based out of the Twin Cities of St. Paul, Minneapolis. And today we're going to be showing our certified ServiceNow application for Ansible Tower and AWX integration and automation. So to set the stage, Kiva is a consulting company. We also develop a lot of IP and software integrations. Everything we do is underpinned by end-to-end -end automation. Uh, we partner with a number of vendors, typically as a, in their technical partner program or as an ISV, and we help our clients deliver um, increasingly mature capabilities around cloud automation, DevOps. So that could be anything from helping you do infrastructure as code and build out CI/CD pipelines to getting your applications ready to be migrated to the cloud or containerized and container adoption. We also do a number of things around agile coaching and agile adoption. So if any of those are of interest to you, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you about that. But as I mentioned, today we're talking about our ServiceNow app for Red Hat Ansible Tower and AWX. And you know what is it? So it's a bi-directional integration. So right off the bat, you won't find too many of these out there. You'll find uh, integration from Ansible back to ServiceNow, which is what we call the southbound integration. Uh, and you won't find pretty much anything from a certified application perspective for ServiceNow to Ansible. And so what we've developed is both of those. On the ServiceNow side, we're premier ISV of ServiceNow. So we've developed a certified scoped app, for those of you who know what those are on the ServiceNow side, where you can simply go out to the ServiceNow store or contact us, us directly for a trial. You can click try the, try the app. Uh, we'll show that to you in a little bit. And you're able to just download it straight to your environment and start using it with minimal configuration. On the tower side, or on the AWX side, we've developed our own module. Uh, and the reason we did this is because the community module that you might find out there today is not fully featured. So if you want to be able to create tickets, create incidents, pretty much anything you might want to do in the ITOM portfolio, you really need a module like ours. We're also an ISV of Red Hat. This module is going through the certification process for Red Hat as I record this demo. And really, you know, why this matters would be that it allows you to easily provide IT services back to the people that want to consume them in your environment, right? So we talk with infrastructure and operations teams all the time. And most of those folks already have a good amount of automation that they've done in their particular domains. But they don't have a really good way to get it back to the people that want to use it. Um, surely everybody's heard about shadow IT and people going out to the public cloud to get what they need. Well, you could give people what they need, whether it's on-prem or in the public cloud, if you had an integration like this that put those requests into a service catalog. This bridge really makes it simple to do that. And again, it's bi-directional. So you can provision pretty complex services or offerings and have all of those tools or solutions you're touching downstream as part of creating that um, offering talk back into the request and so all of that information is kept where it's supposed to be, updating CMDBs, updating and creating CIs, all the things that you need to do to be able to do enterprise service delivery in a way that is completely auditable, completely governed, follows your best practices, and frankly allows your, your subject matter experts to stay in their domains, whether it's from creation of service requests or it's from creation and execution of the underlying automation itself. So you'll see a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, as I said, we're an ISP of both organizations. And so the other thing that this gets for you outside of a very, very easy install, like you would expect from a production quality product, is that you also have support. Um, so as you're building out CIC pipelines, as you're integrating a lot of tool sets, you'll find that there ends up being a lot of carrying costs associated with building those integrations, maintaining them yourselves, and then maintaining them between patch levels. Being an ISV means that, and, and consuming an ISV uh, product like this means that these are always going to work for you. As an example, uh, with ServiceNow, uh, we supported the New York version of ServiceNow with our integration before it was out. And if you went to go update it and you had this integration, the integration update would come along with it and you'd have the confidence of knowing that it's been certified by ServiceNow and by Kiva to work in your environment. Uh, the worst thing you can have happen is you can create a bridge like this that then gets heavily used that then becomes unusable, right? So it's important to create bridges like this, but it's, an, it's important as well to make sure that they're always main, maintained and always available for the people that want to use it. So enough of that. Uh, why don't we actually show you what this looks like? 
So as I mentioned, well, that's a ServiceNow dashboard. If I, ter if I type ServiceNow App Store, this is how your team would go to find this, right? So literally click the store.servicenow.com. And if you search for Ansible, this is what your admins would do on the ServiceNow side. It'll come back, Red Hat Ansible Tower, and this is our app. You, you can buy it, and it'll go straight into your environment. You can request trial that comes to us. We approve it, go straight into your environment. As I said, if you want the bits directly, we can give those to you directly so you can try them out. But this is all you'd have to do. Uh, so what, let's say we've done that. We've requested the trial. We've, re we've purchased it. Uh, now it's in our environment. Now we're looking at the service now service management environment. And from here, I'll show you first what this would look like from a configuration perspective for um, for your admins. You get an Ansible configuration tab, and there are Ansible configurations that you can create. Inside of here, um, for the purposes of this demo, we kind of we're using an admin user, but this you can have multiple configurations in here. Really, all you need to know is what towers are we talking to, what AWS instances are we talking to, and what credentials do we want to pass. There are a couple different ways to do it. Again, we're doing it uh, pretty straightforward here for the purposes of this demo. I've now clicked on Service Catalog, and again, what we're going to show you here is a pretty straightforward demo of the bi-directional nature of this, of this integration. So in this demo case, I, I've got a demo app. And what this is going to do is it's going to take us through the service request change process where I'm going to create a request for this demo app. And we're going to go through, we're going to approve it, we're going to move it to an implement state. And when we move it to an implement state, this bidirectional integration is going to reach out to Ansible Tower to execute our Tower playbooks that we have. If you're not familiar with Tower, it's a very, very popular, very powerful automation engine and uh, management interface. And effectively, they use playbooks that are written in YAML, very simple, straightforward uh, scripting language to pick up. If you've done any shell scripting, any uh, PowerShell or Bash, you, you're already 95% of the way to learning how to use YAML. What it's going to do is it's going to run a playbook, and that playbook is going to provision our demo app instance. And in this case, we're going to provision it out in EC2 because hey, why not? Uh, and you know, we see this a lot. But just to show you that you can really use this kind of for anything you want. So if I click on the demo app here, we're going to see our demo app change template. And I've got my change number right here, uh, 30,059. I'm going to leave all this the same. But this is a standard change template. This can be configured any way you want. You know, in practice, when we do this for our clients, you might have T-shirt sizing here that allows you to pre you know, give small, medium, large sorts of sizing that will set a bunch of different parameters either in the interface or behind the scenes. You can have this passed in from other ServiceNow objects. It's really designed to be super robust, so you can do all sorts of stuff here in terms of what you want to make available to your users to request. In our case, though, pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to change anything in the justification. I'm going to submit the ticket. And now we can see that we've created our service request. This will load back up. I'm going to move this to a scheduled state. Okay. And this is just following our process flow. Again, yours can it can be whatever you want. And the important thing is here, totally audible, auditable, so follow your best practices. Um, in our case, we're going to look at this and say, yeah, this is fine. You know, we're going to a demo environment. We're not doing anything major here. I'm going to hit implement. When I hit implement, it's going to fire off that playbook in Ansible Tower, and it's going to build this in EC2. And one of the things I want to show you is here's our here's my little EC2 environment right now. I've got one instance of M4 large type running out here. Okay, and in Ansible, here's my jobs. This is what Tower looks like. This is its management interface. Uh, there's a ServiceNow integration demo, which is this playbook. This is run. This is a previous run about a week ago. So there's nothing in there that's run yet. I'm going to click implement. Okay, and while this is implementing, it's going to start going through the process. If I come over and look at EC2 and I refresh this, I bet you this is already building my little EC2 instance out here. Yep, and there it is. It's building my micro instance. It's pending. Okay. And now let's go take a look at Ansible. If I refresh the jobs, here's my ServiceNow integration demo. The job is still running. We can see this is actually going. Job just finished, okay, and it finished in an okay state. If we look at the logging here, we can see what it's doing, how it's gathering facts. 
we can see how it's you know getting host names, launching the EC2 instance, how it's updating our ServiceNow ticket to status review. In this case, it does that, and then it ultimately updates it, updates it to closed state. A couple things I want to show you out of here as well is that here's the ServiceNow, here's the SnowSys ID. This this goes back to this specific request. This is how we pass things back and forth uh, between ServiceNow and Ansible Tower. So it allows us to really query anything we might want that's based off of this record inside of ServiceNow to bring it back and forth within this pro within this flow. If I go back now, let's see. Yeah, my instance my instance of Cloudy App is already running up here. That's awesome. If I go back and refresh this ticket, you see how it says implement state. This is going to be all the way to close now. Yep, there it is. It's closed. And then just to show you a little bit more of the bi-directional nature of this, come down here, take a look. Closure information, I believe, is where it would be. And you can see that this ran with Ansible Tower Job 172. And the user the job was run by user admin. So real quick, easy example of how we have a bi-directional integration super seamless. There's very little you need to do as a ServiceNow admin to configure this to make it work. There's next to nothing you need to do to maintain it because we take care of that for you. And on the Tower side, you simply create the playbooks that you want to have run. If you're using Tower, you get role-based access control on that side as well. And you can take anything that you might want to automate and ensure that on both sides of the fence, it's fully audited, fully governed, it's got role-based access control, restricted to the users and the environments and the targets and the automation that you want to have run um, you know, and where you want to have run and how you want to have it run. It's a really powerful tool to actually give capabilities to, say, an offshore or a network operations center where they can't have access to users and passwords and in end targets, but they can have access to the automation to run things in your pre-approved fashion. Uh, so if you if you thought this is interesting, if you think you might want to see how this works in your environment, I invite you to go to store.servicenow.com, search for the Ansible integration by Kiva, or reach out to me, uh, Jesse at uh, Jesse Langhoff, J L A N G H O F F at kivatech.com, or come visit us at kivatech.com. We're happy to help any way we can. Hopefully you found this interesting. Thank you.